SAF adopts the British custom for our consecration ceremony. Drums are piled to provide an altar. The colours are then draped onto the drums. The gentlemen, shortly we will be witnessing the uncasing of colours ceremony. To uphold the dignity and decorum of this solemn ceremony, we kindly request that you switch your mobile devices to silent mode and maintain silence throughout the proceedings. Thank you.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Second Warrant Officer Muhammad Ashik. And I am Military Expert 3 Gilbert Lim, and we will be sharing with you about the Singapore Armed Forces Colours as we witness this dignified and solemn uncasing of colours ceremony. To uphold the dignity and decorum of this ceremony, we kindly request that you switch your mobile devices to silent mode and maintain silence throughout the proceedings. Thank you. This ceremony involves the uncasing of four state colours and 36 regimental colours by the Reserve Parade Regimental Sergeant Major, Master Warrant Officer Mohammad Ayub, and the Colours Regimental Sergeant Major, Second Warrant Officer Sashi Kumar. Facing the colours are five Guard of Honours contingents formed by the men and women from the Army, Navy, Air Force, Digital and Intelligence Service and the Police Force. 
they are bestowed with the responsibility of protecting the honor and proceedings of this ceremony. Colors have its humble beginnings as plate colored flags used by the military. They help soldiers in identifying their units during battles. They were also used as rallying points for the soldiers. Over time, military commanders added emblems and symbols to better represent their command. A military unit is perceived as operational and intact as long as their colors are flown upright in the battlefield. Even in the event of a unit commander's demise, hope is always present as long as the unit colors were up. Similarly, the fall or capture of a unit's colors by the enemy indicates that the unit is defeated. This explains why colors are always carried upright by an ensign and guarded by armed escorts. Only the bravest and strongest soldiers are tasked to guard the colors. These soldiers will protect their colors with their lives. And there are plenty of stories of gallantry and heroic self-sacrifice associated with colors. Modern militaries continue to maintain the tradition of bestowing colors to their units. While colors are no longer used on the battlefield, they are proudly paraded and prominently displayed during ceremonial events. In addition, to commemorate the glorious acts of their units, patches and streamers are adorned upon these colors, serving as symbols of battle honors. The presence of colors within military ranks fosters a profound sense of cohesion, instills an unwavering esprit de corps, and ignites a deep-rooted pride and loyalty among the servicemen and women who bear them. This can be attributed to the rich historical significance attached to colors within military ranks. Each color and insignia carries a storied history, representing the achievements, traditions, and sacrifices of the military unit or branch. This historical context adds depth and meaning to the colors, further reinforcing the sense of pride and loyalty among those who proudly wear them. Colors in the SAF dates back to 1954 when Singapore was then under British rule. The Singapore Volunteer Corps was presented with the Queen's colors and the Singapore Volunteer Corps colors by then Governor of Singapore, Sir John Nicole, on the 8th of July 1954 at the Padang. This was in celebration of the centenary of the Volunteer Corps. After the Japanese occupation, new colors were donated by the city council to replace those that were lost during the fall of Singapore in 1942. Both the colors were retired when the Singapore Volunteer Corps was restructured after our independence in 1965. The Singapore Armed Forces Council is the approving authority for the presentation of colors. And there are only two types of colors in the SAF. They are the state colors and the regimental colors. State colors are presented to the SAF services headquarters that is the Army, Navy, Air Force and Digital and Intelligence Service. Safti Military Institute, by exception, is also presented the state colors in recognition of a role as an international military institution. The first state colors were presented to Safti Military Institute and first to six Singapore Infantry Regiments in 1976. However, the practice of presenting state colors to the formations and units was ceased in 1997. Subsequently, the Navy and Air Force were presented state colors in 1977. The Singapore Armed Forces was presented the state colors in 1997. Of note, the SAF state colors Color is also the Army State Color, and this is presented to the best combat unit during the annual 1st of July SAF Day Parade. Not every unit in the Singapore Armed Forces are conferred regimental colors. Only formation headquarters and maneuver units are presented with them. They are presented their colors five years after their formation. 
The 1st Regimental Colour was presented to 1st Singapore Infantry Regiment in 1961, four years before our independence. The seniority of colours is depicted by colours of its field background as follows. Yellow, red, green, blue, brown and purple. Where it is decided that a standard colour field background is used for units from the same formation, the seniority of the units is depicted by the different coloured fringes. Standard or Roman numerals are also used to identify the units. Colours have to be consecrated before they are presented to the units. The SAF adopts the British custom for our consecration ceremony. Drums are piled to provide an altar. The colours are then draped onto the drums. The Inter-Religious Organisation of Singapore endorsed the order of precedence for the consecration by the ten recognised religions in Singapore as follows. Hinduism, Judaism, Zoroastrianism, Buddhism, Taoism, Christianity, Islam, Sikhism, Baha'i Faith and Jainism. After the consecration, the colours are presented to the unit commander by the President of the Republic of Singapore. The unit commander will in turn present the unit colours to his soldiers in the form of a parade at the nearest opportunity. This parade is known as the Trooping of Colours. During the Trooping of Colours, the colours will be brought on and off the parade ground to the stirring rally tune of Point of War. This is to draw attention and a form of salute to the colours. Soldiers on parade will present arms when colours are brought on and off the parade ground. There are two forms of paying of compliments using colours. The first is when the ensign let the flag fly freely through a movement named Let Fly. Let Fly is done during the following events. During the inspection of the Guard of Honour or soldiers on parade, when colours march past the reviewing officer, when colours are trooped during the trooping of colours, when colours are marching on or off the parade grounds and the soldiers are in the present arms position, and when the Guard of Honour or soldiers are paying compliments to an officer who is not entitled to the second form of compliments, the dipping of colours. Both the state and regimental colours will only dip for the royal salute or head of state salute and only regimental colours will dip during general salutes. Colours will be withdrawn from service when the unit is deactivated but remains in the order of battle. The colours will be cased and safe kept in the formation HQ. The colours will be reallocated to the unit by the formation HQ once the unit is reactivated. The colours will be trooped once the unit is fully formed. Ladies and gentlemen, the uncasing of colours ceremony will be coming to an end shortly. Thank you for joining us on this meaningful military tradition. We wish you all a blessed day ahead.